Welcome to all the classic car enthusiasts. Um, I put this video up, even though it's on the track day car, I put it up as a uh, um, classic mini uh, scuttle repair section. And the reason I've done that is if anybody wants to reference it, they can go come straight to it rather than go to track day car or, or whatever. It's kind of easier to manage. So what I'm going to do in the video is I'm going to take the old one off, which I'll show. I'll show the process of taking it off, measuring it up, taking it off, putting the other one back on uh, and getting an invisible um, uh, finish on it with lead loading. So I'll lead load it and um, weld it, lead load it, but I'll show all the process and I'll do the same thing with the A panel and the closing panel and the doorstep. Now, I, I went to uh, Mini Sport to buy this stuff because I had some credit with them um, that was left over, I think 45 or 50 pounds, so I thought, well, I'll use it up. And I just got Magnum parts. And the reason, I don't normally buy a Magnum because the profiles on them are not that good. I found that Heritage and uh, M Machine are the best panels to go for. Um, a typical example of this I'll show you now. This is the repair panel for, um, for, the, for the scuttle. So this is the scuttle repair panel. I obviously have two of these. Normally what I would do, if it was both sides need replacing, I would just replace the whole scuttle. But in this particular case, it's a race car or a, or a track day car, so it's not needed. The first thing you can see is obviously this was all taped up. And you can see even the paint has come off. So they're very badly, the transit paint on them is extremely bad. But the worst thing, that's not an issue because it needs to be rubbed down anyway. But the biggest issue with these is the profiles are badly stamped. Um, you can maybe see here um, that, and I'll show you this up in detail, but the, the stamp in here is particularly poor. It needs a lot of hammer and dolly work to get this right. But I've got, I've got to change this because we have a carbon fiber front. I'm going to change this lip. So I didn't want to buy a heritage. I don't even know if you can buy just a heritage repair. I don't know, to be honest. Um, certainly you can buy the skull. Anyway, so I've gone with this and I'll show you all the repairs on it and how I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but it's the way I've done it on many minis. Um, and it's a good way to repair it, to get an invisible repair. Um, and I'll show you from start to finish. And as I say, that's why I've titled it that way. Um, and as I go through, I'll show you what, what the issues are with the panels. Um, this is a step panel, for instance. We don't need the whole thing. Uh, we only need a small section of it, but probably we're going to need it on each side. Now, one of the bad things with this is the profile here on them. The profile here is particularly poor. This one's not so bad, this step here, but this one, this lower one is particularly bad. It's, there's not enough depth in it. It certainly wasn't the last one, but we'll see if, if that's changed. So, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you get something from it. Um, and I will be carrying on with the series of repairs on the, on the track day car, but I thought for these repairs, which is common to minis, it would be a good idea to, to uh, uh, title them as what they are, which is the, you know, the step panel, the, the uh, scuttle repair section, and so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoy the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, so um, I won't be able to show all the process, or obviously it would take too long on the video. So I'll just show you the key points. Uh, I might have to do it over two, vid over two videos. We'll see how we get on. So what I'll do is, is I'll actually bring the camera in closer so you can actually see what I'm up to. And uh, I'll just do the voice over I have the mic here. So, so what I'll do is I'll just bring you in and uh, you can see what we're up to. Okay, so this is the panel I have, which is a, which is a Magnum panel, as you can see here. As I said, normally, if I was doing both ends, I would actually take the whole scuttle off. But in this particular case, it's just as easy to repair it. It is a track day car. Okay, probably as you can see here, there is, there's been a repair here before. And I can feel underneath that there is an angle here. So it's not cut where the, where the, where the, where the repair panel will go, but it's cut at an angle. And you'll see that when I take it off. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is get every, all the debris and everything you can out of the way and then offer up your panel. One of the things you need to do when you're taking into account, when you're doing these panels, you need to take into account of the panel you have underneath when you're scribing up. Um, that the, there might be some 
something pushing out. You've also got two thicknesses to worry about. So this is all something you need to take in consideration when you when you mark things off. So in that particular case, what I would always suggest is, is that you cut inside the line a good bit so that you can then put the panel up once this piece is taken out, that this fits in there much better. Um, it's very much easier to, to cut out again than it is to try and put it back in if you make a mistake. One of the things you'll notice about some of the cheaper panels like Magnum is, is the profiles are not as good as Heritage or M Machine and so on. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And as I said, I'll start to cut that out and uh, show you what we're up to. Uh, as usual, it's been very stubborn to come off. So I'm going to try and give it some help by uh, cutting a relief cut in it and uh, see how we go from there. Sometimes you have to kind of play with this. They don't always go to, uh, to plan. So I'm going to cut um, uh, a, a bit just to make it, uh, make it easier to um, to do the job. So, gloves on. So I'm going to cut really tight inside the line because I want to make sure I don't have any issues. do now is pull this piece up which I've done already with the, the spot weld cutter and you can see just by do, doing those relief cuts it's made it a lot easier to get to and you can see where it's been repaired before as I said there's the bit I was talking about and you can see where there's an angle across it so it had been welded before, not particularly well, but it's been done. So now I've got some access to it, I can actually uh, get at the issue and clean all this up properly and clean it back. So I've got to the point where I've got the old one off, which I'm going to show you in a minute. I've just put this on just to see how it lines up. Um, and I'll show you a couple of things that you can use. Uh, there is different methods of holding it. There's um, these what they call intergrips which is these hold the the plates or where you're butt welding them exactly the same distance as as a cutter would a very thin disc cutter uh, and these are called intergrips you can see these from frost you can buy them just about anywhere and then they have another system which is called clico clips which is these ones um, and uh, you can just basically they're just spring loaded so you can see so they come out or they push in and as they come back they, they hold on to the but you've got to use exactly the right drill to do, use these so these are Clecos and this is Intergrips so you can see that's, that's not a bad fit now I need to repair underneath so I have to do that first but you can see now in a situation sometimes you can't always get these Intergrips in um, there are other methods you can possibly undo them and and move the piece into it like that you can see that one's come off um, you can even if, if you can't do that for whatever reason you can't get behind it you could even just use the intergrip like this to get everything flush and just use it as a gap guide uh, obviously it's better if you can put them in because what you can do if there's any uh, if it's not uh, flat parallel to each other um, what you can do is actually move these up and down or backwards and forwards to get the 
get, get it right so it's completely uh, flush. As I say, if it's up like that, you can push down, or if it's down, you can push up. So these intergrips are the way to go if you can, if you can get to the point where you need them, or, or uh, a, a position where you can get them. So as you can see in here, it's pretty scabby, so I'm going to clean all this up, finish off this um, um, pipe, or this ring for the forced air, the forced um, colder air to come into the carburetor box in here. So I'll get all that done, clean it all up, put some Bronox on it, which is a rust eater, um, and then I can put this on. But as you can see, um, there's the finish on it there. You can see here, there's a few things that are not quite right. The finishing here is, is particularly bad. And what I'll do is I'll just bring you in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I can find the, yeah. So I can bring you and I can show you that. Right, so you can see here, for instance, on the edge there, there's a, a, a little round, it's gone in a bit, so that needs dollying out for a start off, because that's not flush like that piece is there. And I think you can see that. When I put them up against each other, you can see there's a dimple in it. You can see where the stamping's not been very good, and it's actually dented in there. Now, the more of this you get rid of, maybe that will show it up better, the more you get rid of this, the less filler or lead loading you have to do. Obviously lead is better than filler, but that's just your, everybody's choice to use what they want. Uh, I particularly like it because I think it's a great medium to work with lead. But you can see there, it's definitely not right. So I'll clean all this up, get this profile nice. It's not particularly good there either. There either. So I'll do this and I'll bring it back and show you. Um, how it looks after some fettling. Giving this one a bit of a dolly up and a bit of a clean up and I've just looked at the opposite side and it's the same situation so I'll just bring you in and let you have a look at this. Um, so you can see here this is the other side and you can see straight away in that corner, I hope you can see it, maybe that light is in the wrong position. You can just see there's, a, there's that dimple here, it's not it's not correct. Maybe that shows it better. It's not been pressed very well. Now that all needs dollying up before you even think about putting it on. Or you're going to have a lot, put a lot of filler on that to disguise it. So this is this is the kind of situations that you get uh, with magnum panels. I found I'm not just sliding magnum. I mean they are cheap and they do the job, but you know it's a lot of fettling. Um, if you watch Gentleman's Motor Racing Team. Uh, Kevin Richardson, he's just done some uh, bits with um, the front of his car, front of his Mini, his Rally Mini, and he's had the same issues where you spend a lot of time and it really isn't worth the effort. You're better off buying the better panels. Anyway, so that's that side, and you can see uh, here I've actually now dollied this up and it's much, much better. It will need some more extra cleaning up, but I've got all the dents out the best, the best I can there, and it's and it's cleaned this edge up quite considerably. So that's the situation. Um, you know, you, I, I guess it's that old, it's a, it's that old adage. I'll just bring you out. I guess it's that old adage. You, you know, you get what you pay for um, with these things. So. What I'm going to do now is, this, obviously, I have to do all the remedial work under here, uh, work on this vent and so on and so forth. So, um, what I'll do in the in the next one, in the next video, I'll do a part one. This is part one, obviously. In part two, I'll actually show all the thing cleaned up because I've got a quite a few hours of work to do under here. Um, and in part two, I'll show how, how I actually put it on, how I get it in line, and. Um, um, I might even have to do another one to show the lead loading. I'll try and see if I can keep it short enough to weld it into place, get it cleaned back and, put, and possibly do a bit of lead loading on it or at least primer so you can't see it. So um, as usual, stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby and uh, I hope these little tips help out. This, I'm not saying, I'm not a professional in, in body work or mechanical or anything else. I, I do it as a hobby. I want everybody to realise that. Um, I'm just saying this is the way I do it. 
it doesn't mean that it's absolutely the correct way, but I try and use common sense and, and experience. And, uh, and from my experience, this is the way I found easy enough to do this. And you don't have to have all the specialised tools. It does help, it makes a big difference, it makes the job go much quicker and easier if you have the tools, but uh, that's not always the situation. Um, and what I will do when I'm doing like, the second video, I'll show you a little technique you can do without having butt welding, where you can use an overlap. Um, and that sometimes helps in this situation, so you can cut it shorter. Anyway, take care, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.